Hey everyone, thanks for joining and welcome to our 20th project Euler.net video. Today we're going to be taking a look at problem 20, factorial digit sum. So first they define factorial operation, number exclamation mark, which means number times number minus one times number minus two, etc. until you get to one. So they give us the example of 10 factorial, which comes out to this large value, and they tell us the sum of the digits in the number 10 factorial is here, 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 8, etc., which is equal to 27. They want us to find the sum of the digits in the number 100 factorial. So basically it sounds like we just need to calculate the value and split it up by digit and sum up the digits together. So the requirement is simple enough. So what I'm thinking we could do is use that big int class again that we've used in previous videos. If you haven't watched previous videos, JavaScript provides big int class, which lets us store numbers that are much larger than what it can normally store. So there's a maximum safe integer. This lets us go well beyond that. Other languages such as Java have similar constructs. Java has a big integer class, which operates very similarly to big int from JavaScript. So we're going to be coding our project in TypeScript, which is a extension of JavaScript essentially. So if you've never used TypeScript or you don't know what it looks like, the syntax is very easy to follow along with, so you shouldn't have any troubles following along during the video. I'm going to be using a class to create this solution. That's not required either, I just want to take advantage of some utilities which I've written to solve the problem. So I'm going to make a helper called do solve, which is what we generally do, and I'll provide a limit parameter that will let us say, okay, this time let's just run with 10, and then this time we can run with 100, so that way we can test our answer with the value they gave us first, and then switch back to what they're asking us once we've validated. So I'm going to use a big int straight out because I don't know how many number of digits 100 factorial will have, but we might as well prevent ourselves from getting into any type of overflow error by using big int from the start. So I'm going to make a variable let big product is equal to one n. So that n right here just tells us we're defining a big int, not a regular number. So we're gonna start it as one, and then let i is equal to two, i is less than limit, less than equal to limit actually, i plus plus. We're going to multiply big product times equal i. We better call i a big int as well to preserve the type. Otherwise, we'd be multiplying a big int by a number, and I guess the system doesn't want us to do that. So there's two ways we could go about this. We could convert it to a string, convert each character back into a number and multiply it out. Or we could just keep dividing by 10 and taking the modulus up to 10 and then adding that into the sum. So well, I'm curious to see which one's faster, actually. I feel like the string one might be, but I don't know for sure. So I'll make something called mode. And I'll say it's a string or number. If string, we'll use our string method. If number, we'll use our number method. I'll make big sum is equal to zero n, another big int. That's where we'll keep our sum value. So if we're using string mode, then we'll say big SDR. Actually, what we'll do is we'll say let digits is equal to big product dot to string. Then we're going to say array dot from big product dot to string. So we're converting the string into an array of individual characters so that we can just call map on that array. Then the last step will be to map the string to a big int value. And we can do that just by calling the big int function and pass in string. So now with digits, we have a array of big int digits from the string. So now we'll say big sum is equal to digits dot reduce. And we'll say ACC plus digit. So we're just going over the entire array. And at each point, the accumulator has the subtotal up to that number. And then we add the digit into it. The other method is we just keep dividing by 10 until we've reached the last digit. So what we can do is that working product is equal to big product while working product is greater than 10 n sum plus equal to working product modulus 10 that's big sum 
And then working product is equal to math.floor working product divided by 10n. Okay, so it looks like we can't call math.floor on a big int itself. What's an integer? We don't need to do that. We can just directly say working product divided by 10n, and since it's integer division, it'll automatically round down for us. The last step is big sum plus equal to working product. And the reason we're doing one more is because at this rate, it's less than 10, but we still might have something left over. So we'll just add it in for good measure. Then we will return big sum. Now what I'll do here is return this dot do solve 10 and string. And instead of number, we'll return big int here as well. Okay, so let's run that. We should get this answer here of 27. Good. If I set this to number, we should also get 27. What I'll do is I'll just comment it out so that way we can switch back and forth easy. So that's two milliseconds. It's probably, yeah, same exact thing, just because of how small the input is. We would actually have to run this on a much larger input, such as 100, to see if it's going to be any significant difference. So let's run that. That was faster somehow, <laughs> probably just because my computer is also you know, doing other things as we speak. So that was one millisecond, assuming that was the correct answer we got. Just out of curiosity, let's run it the number way. 2 milliseconds. Again, it's so small and so close to each other, we don't know if that actually performed worse. So let's go ahead and enter our answer and see if it's correct. Okay, so we got the correct answer in a very fast amount of time, both in terms of how long it took us to solve the problem and how long it took to execute the problem. So definitely a good approach that we took today. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to set this to some much higher value. I'll say 9876 and we'll see how long it takes. 202 milliseconds, that gives us something to work with to see which one is faster. Okay, the string approach is definitely faster in that case. This one took seven times as long, so we'll keep the string one in place. Now we have a clear winner. So I'm satisfied with the answer that we have today. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications for upcoming Project Euler videos. I'm going to be posting these at a rate of 1 per day, 12 o'clock noon, until we reach 100 problems solved. Thanks for watching.